remember the last episode of the Gouda Ultimate Search I talked about. I called it a gracious one. Well, tonight's episode is what I would like to call a funny one. Find out why. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Lucy's Quick One. This is talking about the Gouda Ultimate Search. Yes, it's Saturday and this is what went down. Now, first of all, of course, they will always play us like previously on the Gouda Ultimate Search where they also showed us how Estima got the boomerang. And you know, afterwards, we get to see how the contestants or the warriors begin to search for boomerangs up and down because ah, what's going on? Osas already has, Estima already has. And then while they were back in the jungle in their camp, Damola gets a boomerang. Moving on to the new day, it's a new day, the warriors are getting ready, going about their business and then Kunle pays them an early morning visit and this is where the whole funny part of tonight's episode starts, he makes us smile. Step to the centre right, darling, you want to sound like a wolf. I mean, talking about your spirit animal, I don't even know if I can actually, you know, imitate my spirit animal. I don't even know if I have one. Now, let's move on to the task of today. It was called Spin and Spell. But before we even talk about the task, can we take a moment to talk about Tokyo Makinwa's outfit? Like, seriously, that ensemble. You know all those people who like to like go to African countries where there's like wild, wild wildlife where you can actually see giraffes running by the side that's actually how the dress and then Toki Makiwa was serving it today on the episode now let's talk about spin and spell apparently what each clan member or each clan had to do was to divide themselves into two now the first two will have to climb a ladder pick up a bag of puzzles, get down the ladder, and then move to the spin. Now, they will spin their, their bodies around with the spin and then take the lid off and then take the second bag of puzzles and climb a bridge and then go to the other side of the clan where the other two clan members will be. Now, the other two clan members, their job was basically to spell out the, the words in that puzzle or the puzzle bag and then, you know, erect them down on the puzzle stand. Now, the beginning of this whole thing, you know, this clan members, it was slow. Then they started wasting more time and then more time and then Kule was like okay you know what I'm going to do I'm going to give you a clue he first of all tells them that the answer is actually a 12 letter word and that two letters in the puzzle were actually useless well this guy still didn't get it he now went on to say you know what is going to happen actually the word are the same thing for the two puzzle stands but these contestants or these warriors were not getting it until Amor clan said yes we got it and Amor moves again from zero to hero well, congratulations to the Amor clan. Just at that point, that it was revealed that the remaining two clans, that is Iroko and Iri, would have a member go home tonight. Now, this didn't deter these guys from, you know, going back to the camp and still celebrating and still talking and all of that. And at that point in time, the members of the Amor clan came out to reveal that the reason they got their puzzle right was because of Damola. And at that point, I was like, hmm, I think Damola really has an eye for the game. I should be keeping my eye on Damola. Now, let us move to the place of the talking drum. Okay, Maki, why now? usual manner talks to the Iroko and Irin clan and she asked them what actually happened why did you guys lose and then the Irin clan Ismail was speaking on behalf of the Irin clan and he said something that really I think upset Toke Makinwa he said that the ladies were chosen to do the puzzles because he felt like they didn't have as much strength as the guys did and that made her upset she goes on to talk about the boomerang that's Toke Makinwa she talks about the boomerang she talks to Estima and then Damola for getting the boomerang and then she reveals that this boomerang has been there all along it's just that this guy did not just pay attention to it that's from the beginning of the show and i was like wow woo. you know i mentioned it i was wondering why Oriva Ogene did not you know look for the boomerang when it was evicted was it that there was no more time or i don't know now let's go to the eviction proper she starts with the iroko clan and she, and she does her usual question and answer segment whereby she asks a particular member of the clan a question we don't get to move on to the next person and then when she moved around tobe was not able to get his answer right and he was evicted from the gouda ultimate search today your journey ends here. Moving to the Inri clan, it was quite different, but still the same thing about questions and answers. Now she asked them to go into the port and pick their questions, and they take turns to read out their questions aloud and then answer. And as they did that, Ismail was not able to get his own answer correct, and he was evicted from the Gouda Ultimate Search. You're hereby evicted from the Gouda Ultimate Search. Ah, 
<laughs> guys, as those guys were leaving, I was telling myself again that why are these guys not looking for the boomerang? Is it possible that it's just three boomerangs that we have in that jungle? They just left like that. Like, how? Now, moving back to the place of the talking drum. Talking Makinwa well, goes into the dramas that is happening in the jungle. That's about the rumors. And then she's like, I'm hearing that. Some people are liking each other. And then everybody starts to laugh. And then she calls on Tosin. Tosin just stands up and he was just blushing for reasons that I do not understand. And then she moves on. Talking Makinwa well, moves on to Osas and he's like, Osas, what's going on? Osas was the one that actually spilled the beans and said, He thinks that we have widows in the jungle. The two warriors are left us tonight. Unfortunately, the house home. <laughs> no, call me. Conscience. Name and shame. Uh, to be curiously with it. Jennifer. <laughs> you notice when they've been dragging this whole Jennifer and Toby matter. Well, Tokimakiwa asked Jennifer what exactly is going on. They felt because they always laughed and joked up with him most times. They felt there was a romance or something that was there. But there was no. Would you miss today? No. Honestly, Jennifer saying that she would not miss today. I think it is expected because they are in a competition and not for love. However, if love happens, so be it. Now we move on to the second revelation. Something I did not see coming because this lady, I just see as I'm very focused. I'm not saying she's not focused, but Osas reveals another bromance or dromance in the jungle. Ishmael and Chidima. Chidima. What is the nature of your relationship with Ishmael? Um, oh no, there's no romance, yeah. They're just very good friends. Ah, in this jungle that we are in, things are happening there. <laughs> well, no, no, that was how the show actually ended. And like as Toki Makanwa always says, one by one, the warriors will fall. As that now we have 10 contestants or warriors in the Gouda Ultimate Search jungle. And we wait to see and watch what's going to happen at the end of the day and who will be our winner. But till then, guys, I say thank you so much for watching. I got you with Sunday's highlights. Till then, don't forget to subscribe.